According to the Bible, God said unto Noah, Make thee an ark. Behold, I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. No written word has survived as much skepticism as the story of Noah's ark. A century ago, scholars dismissed it as a quaint old legend. Then, evidence of its authenticity began to appear. In 1870, a young British clerk found an ancient account of Noah. Recently, divers in Florida found human bones submerged by an Ice Age global flood. And now, Climbers are risking their lives on treacherous Mount Ararat for the greatest archaeological prize of all, remains of Noah's Ark. Bible says, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. All the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Most scholars thought Noah's flood was a parable. What if modern science could prove it true? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. A few feet of snow, a few days of rain can destroy a city. In Johnstown, Pennsylvania, after only two days of rain, the river rose 46 feet. 25 people were killed. When rivers burst their banks or tidal waves sweep onto land, the death toll can be staggering. Time and again in the 20th century, we've witnessed the awesome destructive power of a flood. The greatest legend of all is the flood. The story of Noah has been told in many fanciful ways. A recent recreation, The World That Perished, made by an organization called Films for Christ, tells the tale in a literal fashion. According to this recreation, Noah's Ark was 450 feet long. Such an enormous barge could contain enough animals to repopulate the earth. The Bible says Noah took seven of every clean animal aboard. It rained for 40 days and nights, but the waters were on the earth more than a year. Bible scholars have estimated that the deluge would have killed one billion humans and 35 trillion animals. They say that is exactly what God intended, to erase a wicked, violent world. So, searching for proof of Noah's flood is like trying to solve the greatest mystery story of all time. Clues are everywhere and have been found in the most unexpected places. The modern search for Noah's Ark began in 1870 with George Smith, a British bank clerk. Tons of broken 4,000-year-old tablets had been dug up near the Persian Gulf and stored in the British Museum. Smith was translating the cuneiform writing when he noticed a line that sent chills up his spine. An old man named Utnapishtim took his family and all kinds of animals aboard the great boat and the flood. 
the next piece was missing. Smith struggled with the puzzle for nine years. When he published his findings, they created a sensation. The London Daily Telegraph raised enough money to send him back to Nineveh, where against all odds, he found the missing piece. The details were so exact, it seemed to confirm that Utnapishtim was just another name for Noah. It told of sending forth a dove, then a raven, to test for dry land, and the great boat landing on a mountain. The Bible says, and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. For more than 2,000 years, mountain climbers have told of a huge ancient boat hidden in the glaciers of a mountain called Ararat near the Russian-Turkish border and now surrounded by top-secret missile sites. In the last 30 years, several research teams have braved the storms and avalanches to hunt an elusive prize. Many people thought this picture caught a glimpse of Noah's Ark, but it turned out to be just a boulder. Some observers have seen the Ark in a tiny blip on this satellite photo, but an active imagination can see many things. In 1969, members of the Search Foundation climbed Ararat with modern equipment. Risking their lives in a crumbling crevasse at 14,000 feet, they managed to film an incredible find. Beams of hand-hewn wood were discovered. A piece of Noah's Ark would be the greatest archaeological find of all time and would discredit the theory of evolution. Hoping to date the wood to 5,000 years ago, the Search Foundation sent samples to Reiner Berger, professor of geophysics at UCLA and a world leader in radiocarbon dating. It consists of oak wood that is very dark it looks like it has been exposed to lots of water or melt water and obviously it must have been brought onto Mount Ararat because it's way above the timber line where that piece was found. Uh, these reports of wood being 5,000 years old from Mount Ararat I think are erroneous. A number of my colleagues and I have separately dated uh, separate pieces of wood from there and found it to originate from around 8700 to 900 in other words the middle ages although some scientists challenge the validity of radiocarbon dating the presence of the ark on ararat has not been confirmed there is however overwhelming evidence for the flood Nineteenth-century scientists delighted in poking holes in the story of Noah. For a time, the theory of evolution seemed to sink the ark for good. Many twentieth-century scientists, however, have come to believe in the story of Noah and the Genesis Flood. Chief among them is Dr. Henry Morris, an expert in geology and the flow of water. We have in our Creation Research Society, for example, uh, at least 600 scientists, and then there are thousands of others who are uh, scientists, that is, they're trained, qualified scientists in different fields of science, some of them geologists, some of them biologists, chemists, and so on, the whole range of science represented. And these men all do believe in the worldwide flood, as well as a special creation. So there's a real uh, revival of interest in what we might call biblical creationism and catastrophism today among Many scientists, it's still a minority, but it's a significant minority. There were two main causes of the flood, we believe. One is that there were great subterranean pressurized reservoirs under the Earth's surface. These erupted, bringing with them tremendous quantities of volcanic materials, magmas, as well as water, steam, and so on. And 
then that uh, together with a tremendous downpour of rain all over the world resulting from the condensation of a pre-flood worldwide vapor canopy around the earth, a blanket around the earth that uh, kept the earth as a giant greenhouse in the time before the flood. This all condensed and precipitated. There were tremendous torrents of rain all over the world for a long time. At the same time, these subterranean fountains and reservoirs burst open. And so both from above and from beneath, the Earth's crust just literally was eroded and transported and redeposited. The Earth was destroyed, essentially, in its original form and then redeposited, and a new world emerged then after the flood. Then wherever you look, in the mountains or in the valleys, everywhere all over the world, you find evidence of the flood. The entire geological column really uh, speaks of catastrophic hydraulic burial, and this is a flood. Henry Morris founded the Institute for Creation Research at San Diego, California, where those scientists who call themselves creationists are gathering data in support of a worldwide flood. One dramatic example of rocks telling the story of the flood is the Grand Canyon. Not only here, but all over the earth, sedimentary rocks are found in great thicknesses. Since there is no worldwide time gap or unconformity recorded in these sediments, Morris reasons they must have been deposited by a single worldwide event, the flood. This took about a year. Canyons were then quickly carved in the soft sediments as the floodwaters receded. The present Colorado River just simply does not have enough energy in it. There's not enough energy in the uh, dynamics of the water to cut that canyon even in a trillion years. In other words, the only way that you could have that canyon would be for there to have been soft sediments, uh, tremendously greater quantities of water than now flow through, through the river, uh, then it cut down rather rapidly, maybe starting with giant uh, opening, maybe sort of giant mud cracks or something in these uplifted flood sediments. So the, the whole Colorado plateau area and the canyons going through it really speak of catastrophism, not of uniform tyrannism. Other independent geologists have found evidence for the flood. Dr. Clifford Burdick has been to Mount Ararat four times. He failed to locate Noah's Ark, but his scientific mind recognized other clues. We did find many evidences. We were very surprised about the, what we did find that supported the, the uh, theory that there was an ark, and because that the mountain was covered with water at one time. And this is one of the evidences. We found great bodies of salt at 6,000 feet, which uh, indicate that the water was much higher than 6,000 feet at one time. And also at 13,000 feet, we found conglomerate rock, which is rounded and formed underwater. And also all the way up and down, we found what is known as pillow lavas. That is, liquid lava is poured out uh, under the water and uh, it freezes quickly in the form of pillow-shaped uh, affairs. So we have three principal evidences, I think, that there was a flood, although we didn't get to see the, the ship itself, unfortunately. Many of his fellow scientists would say that Burdick is off by a hundred million years. However, evidence for the global flood came from another field of research, folklore. On every continent are countless cultures, each with its unique collection of myths. At least 200 amazingly tell the same story of an ancient flood. Uh, we have a story like Noah from India too. And it's about Manu who caught a little fish, who told him about the flood. And so he went and built himself a boat because of which he survived. And uh, when the water went down, he found himself on top of a mountain, which is still called Manu's Descent. And when the water receded, uh, it left the valleys that we still see in India today. From Kenya. Yeah, we have a story like the Noah's Flood. And this was actually caused by a woman who was a rainmaker, who was disappointed by some people in a party. And she decided to tell her friend to take away all her belongings. And she brought a big rain from many American Indian tribes. In the beginning of time, there was a great fall of snow. Then a mouse came and gnawed at the leather 
skin and let out all the heat. Which caused a great flood that covered the fir trees in all the Rocky Mountains. There was an Indian man who came and saved all the animals and put them in his canoe. Even evolutionary scientists were puzzled by this consistency. They began searching for a source of water which could have flooded an entire planet. They found one in melting ice. When the last ice age melted, the oceans of the world rose 300 feet. Now scientists suspect this may have happened very rapidly and could have been the basis for the stories of Noah's flood. Cesare Emiliani, professor of geology at the University of Miami, was investigating ancient tide marks and made a surprising discovery about the effect on North America of melting polar ice. At, at a certain point in time, when this ice cap had thinned out considerably, seemed to have collapsed and produced this flood down the Mississippi Valley and elsewhere. There were also floods in the west and so on. In fact, giant floods in the west. Research vessels sent Emiliani samples, collected from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. A heavy probe punches out long cylinders of mud. By measuring oxygen isotopes in this mud, Emiliani found that almost 12,000 years ago, fresh, cold meltwater suddenly flooded across North America into the Gulf. There is no question that the sea level rise in the Gulf of Mexico would in fact affect the rest of the ocean because the Gulf of Mexico is open to the rest of the ocean. So if we, there is a sea level rise in the Gulf of Mexico, it would affect the entire world ocean. We have been able to estimate that peak flooding down the Mississippi Valley might have reached occasionally an amount about 10, maybe even 20 times larger than peak flooding in historical time. So a very huge flood or a series of flooding for a relatively short period of time. Emiliani's theory was confirmed when Florida scuba divers found human skeletons and cave dwellings underwater. Warm Mineral Springs, a popular health spa, is a 250 foot deep sinkhole. When divers stumbled upon remains of a community now submerged, the experts dismissed it all as a laughable hoax. Sonny Cockrell, Florida State underwater archaeologist, proved the experts wrong. He created an elaborate videotape system to record every dive and eliminate any possibility of fraud. He confirmed the amazing fact that these caves were dwellings. Well, the fact that we have a human burial, an intentional human burial, a man buried with his favorite tool, the spear thrower, with uh, stalactites placed in to cover up the burial crevice, uh, indicates that that was at one time dry. Cockrell found an 11,000-year-old human skull preserved by the oxygen-free mineral water. His discovery offers new proof for Noah's flood. Is it possible this Indian was a victim of that flood or a witness to rising oceans at the end of the Ice Age? It, it depends upon whether or not uh, the sea level rise occurred uh, rapidly enough to be noticed by the people. There was a period from around uh, 11,000 years ago to 6,000 years ago when the sea level came up from about 100 meters to about 10 meters below present sea level. That was very, very rapid geologically. The question remains, was it rapid uh, in terms of human behavior? We'll need further research. I think it's an answerable question. Geologists now believe the collapse of the ice cap was in places devastating. When Glacial Lake Missoula broke through a huge ice dam, parts of Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana were scoured by a 1,000-foot-high wall of water in a single day. 
Was this Noah's flood? Scientists disagree. So we would say that the flood probably preceded the Ice Age and that the melting of the ice cap that they're talking about, it might have produced a local flood, and no doubt did, maybe around the seacoast of the world, but this was sometime after the biblical flood and probably was on the order of a few thousand years ago rather than 11,000. Now, there were times in which there was a lot more ocean water on land, that is, the capacity of the ocean basin was smaller. The last time that happened was about uh, 70 or so million years ago. And there were areas that had been flooded every now and then. For instance, Northern Europe was flooded about 30 million years ago. Italy didn't even exist until re relatively recently came out from the ocean and so on. But uh, a major flood covering the whole Earth in a period of one year, absolutely not. It's been said, if Noah's Ark were found tomorrow, believers would say, we told you so, and skeptics would still doubt. There's a curious coincidence. The collapse of the ice cap, the flooding of the Florida Indian caves, and Plato's story of the sinking of Atlantis all have the same date, 11,600 years ago. Was this Noah's flood? The scientists are sharply divided, but they do agree on one fact. Through 200 generations of folklore and legend, mankind has retained the dreamlike memory of a prehistoric deluge. <laughs>